All right, today I'm gonna to do an update on the Capri. This is a 19 foot, 1958 Chris Craft Capri, and I've got the whole sides in color. I finished sanded them, fared them out, bleached them, uh, and applied the filler stain, and there's two coats of sealer and four coats of varnish so far. And now I'm gonna start working on the deck. I've gotta replace this deck. And the first thing I'm replacing on the deck are the covering boards. But before I had, before I replaced the, before I started fitting the covering boards, I had to get this, uh, this rub rail, this is where the wood rub rail goes. I had to get that fared down. And because this, these were new planks on the top here, and this came out to a point. So I had to work this area down so I knew where to put these, the covering boards. So before I installed this covering board here, I worked this, this uh, landing down. And the way I did that was with my rabbit plane because this, is, this here is where the, the, the rub rail is 7 8 wide. And what it does is it comes up about an eighth of an inch on this. You could, I don't know if you can see that old witness line right there. It comes up about an eighth of an inch on the covering board. So this surface needs to be about three quarter wide. So what I did was I took my rabbit plane here and I started back here. And what happens is this hole, the, it angles out and then it gets to a point where it's, it's like a vertical and then it starts, uh, it starts angling back in. So you gotta find that where it's 90. And I started, I started with my rabbit plane with the guide on it. That keeps it 90 to this surface, to the shear shelf. And I just worked this down until I got uh, pretty much a constant reveal of about three quarter. It's a little under, but I could always work that down if I have to a little bit. So I did that on both sides and it came out pretty nice. It's a, it's a constant reveal all the way to the back. And then what happens is the rub rail will taper into nothing. The wood rub rail will taper into nothing somewhere around here. And then the stainless will continue on back there and cover up that uh, the seam here. Here's a piece of the old, uh, the old rub rail, 7 8 wide. And I don't know if you can see that witness mark right there, but this is gonna go, this is the old covering board. This here is gonna cover that up and it's gonna, it's gonna be 90 degrees of that shear shelf or basically vertical. So I, I had to work this down first. Now the next step is to, to lay out, mill, and install these, uh, the covering boards. And when I first thought about doing this, I've never done a whole deck before, but when I first started doing it, I was trying to figure out whether or not I was going to put the deck planks on first and then this. But what I did was I got these milled and I, I figured, I think it's better to actually install these on the boat. They're actually installed right now with new screws and 5200. Because if I were to put all of these on here, all of the, you know, with these, with these angles, right here where the seams come together and then take them off and then fit the deck. I, there's too much movement in there. When you go to put them back on, I think too much, too many things are moving. So now when I fit this next covering board up to here, I'm fitting to something that's already fixed. It's not gonna move anywhere. So I'll have a less chance, less chance for movement. And the only advantage for fitting that I could see for, 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 fitting these and screwing them, out, screwing them on temporarily and then taking them off is when I go to fit these forward deck planks, if I had all of these, which one is this? Somewhere over here. If I had all of these fit in this and the uh, covering board wasn't on, you know, I have to cut this rabbit in here. It'd be easy to do it with a router with all the planks on and then put these back on. But like I said, I think there's gonna be too much movement. And these things right here, they weren't, they didn't just fall into place. You had to screw them down. And with the, with the thickness of these, you had to kind of push them down and clamp them. So I think there's a good chance of things moving. So, so to remedy that, when I go to cut and fit each one of these planks, I could just take this on my router table. The only thing we're gonna to have to do is put a sacrificial piece of wood uh, where I start and stop um, so I don't have a uh, tear out at the very end, but I don't think that's gonna be a big deal. I'd rather have all these covering boards on first and then fit the king plank and then fit the rest of the planks. And I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna um, 
screw these down as I go. I'm not going to fit everything. Like on the bottom, I'll fit all the planks, and I'll take them off and glue them all down. I think I'm going to, uh, at least on this one, I think I'm going to uh, fit each plank and then, uh, and then glue, uh, glue it down with 5200 and screws as I go. We'll see if that changes though. But for sure on the covering boards, I'm going to, I'm going to fit them, uh, I'm going to install them as I go. So bef what I did was these, this line here, this inboard uh, line, I got that from the old ones. Here's an old, here's the old port covering board. And those have to be a mirror image of each other. And they have to be, the, the distance on here, I've got, a, I've got a little screw right here. And I've got, a, it's equal distance from this inboard edge to both sides. And it touches here at the center. I've got a center line established. So when you put the, all the deck planks on, the, this, it's gonna be nice and symmetrical. So that's important to have a mirror image of each other. And uh, then what I did, is because these were so bulky. I've seen some guys on, a, on a YouTube and stuff, they'll take and just put, um, cut these just rectangular, and then uh, at the, at, when they're all installed, then they'll go through and take, um, they'll take, uh, I've seen a, 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 pla a electric plane, and um, they'll take and just shave all these down. What I did was I took the two major angles and this one here is about 20 degrees and this one's 45. And I cut those first, it helped me, it helped me to install this because it took away a lot of the, the wood, a lot of the material, and it was easier to actually bend this down here. And also I think it's gonna be a big help when I go through and fare this because uh, I'll show you over here where this, this is the old one, I'm gonna replace this, but where it meets up, you can see where my two the two major angles. This one's here's 20 and this one here's 45. With those two angles cut and when I go to put these deck, these, this deck is going to be a half an inch. The old one was like 3 eighths. That was probably, it's probably started out half inch. Um, when I put that on there what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the deck on, install it, and then when I go to fare the boat I'm going to work the deck down to this surface so that's all smooth. And then I'm gonna have these two angles here already established. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my hand plane and I'm gonna knock this corner off, knock this corner, and it's gonna to start to really come into shape really fast instead of just having one big rectangle here. And uh, I suppose you could, with the rectangle, you could cut these angles in on the boat, uh, either with a grinder or a hand plane, but this, this piece of wood didn't want to really want a hand plane that great. It was easier to, what I did was I ran this, um, this one on, a, on the bandsaw with the table tilted, and I took this one and I, I ran it, uh, kind of freehanded it through my table saw on a 45, and I got those two established. So, so the shape is gonna come in quick, I think. So, now I'm on this, the, uh, so those are installed, the forward two covering boards are installed. Now I'm working on this one and that's why uh, I'm gonna start, uh, I'm gonna show you how I do that. I'll take you over to the, to the bench. I'm getting all these covering boards out of one piece of wood. I went to General Hardwood. This is uh, a good solid piece of mahogany, it's real dense. It's uh, 18 inches wide, two inches, a little over two inches thick, 15 foot long. And here, here's the, the, the two blanks for the next two covering boards. This is the port one. And what I did was I just laid this, I just laid the old one on here. And it's a real nice smooth arc. You can tell from the factory they did it with, uh, with big shapers. You can see the mill marks. So I put this on here. Uh, well, first of all, I laid this on the, the piece and cut it with a, with a jigsaw. It was too big for me to, to handle it, uh, to run it through the bandsaw. So it took some time, but I've got a, um, here's the jigsaw with a pretty good blade in it. it took a few minutes to do, but I, I got the blank out. Then what I did was I ran it through the joiner on the bottom side, then I ran it through the planer. So it, uh, it's just under two inches. And then I put the old covering board, on this is the port one, and I got this line established here. And then I cut it real close on my, uh, on my bandsaw. You gotta have a real, a real sharp blade 
um, to run it through or it'll want to wander a lot. So I sharpened this blade and uh, before I started these pieces. And then with a little bit proud, I went and I, I put it on, uh, on the sander here, on the, the spindle sander, and I just ran, I had a tape line on here, and I just ran it down the spindle sander, and then I got it, that was right to the tape, and then I took the sanding marks out with a, with a block like this, with um, 40 grit and then 80 grit, and it came out real nice. It's real smooth. Now, to get the second one, the mirror image, I could have uh, laid it out, just laid this one on top of it, the new piece, and I could have done the same thing, but what I did was I laid my good piece on top of here, and I just took this router bit, and I clamped this down. I took this top bearing off, and I followed this along. Now this isn't, it isn't wide enough to, to uh, cut all the way to the full depth of this. So what I did was I, I made a pass like this, then I, then I brought it up and used this bottom bearing on, my good, uh, on the good surface and brought it down a little bit more. It took a little doing, but I think it was still quicker than laying it out and, and um, using a bandsaw and a spindle sander. So now I have two, now I have two blanks. The, the inside edge is a mirror Im image of each other. And I'll take this. This is the port side. I've got my angle cut. And before I installed those forward, the forward ones, of course I cut this, this angle. It's about 26 degrees both ways, down and then in. So I'll put this on here. And I'll, you can see that's a pretty good joint there. And what I'm gonna do is, this gets 52 to the shear shelf, and then I'm gonna epoxy um, this joint here. The old one, someone must have dug it out and put a caulk line in there, but that's not, that's not original. So I clamped it there, and this is a little bit, this is still about a quarter inch proud here. So I clamped that there, and I, I had this little, this little clamp here to the shear shelf. I clamped this down, and I got it inboard where, just where I wanted it, and I matched it with the other side. And then I've got a nice pencil mark underneath there. So I'm gonna take, here's the pencil mark here. I'm gonna take and cut that down, and by the time I cut that, I'm gonna be just maybe like a 30 second over on my width here. And then once that is pretty close to there, then I'm gonna go through uh, either on a bandsaw or table saw, but I'll show you how I do it, and get these two angles. And also what that helps you with too, is if this was one big rectangle, these countersinks would have to be real deep. You'd have to countersink it, and then you'd have to take a 3 8 uh, drill bit and drill even deeper, and then you gotta figure out each one, like how far to go, so when you start fairing this down, you don't hit a screw head. So that helps you with that too, when you, to get some of this wood down. So that's the next step, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna uh, cut this outboard edge so it's just over this uh, where the rub rail goes here. And then I'm gonna cut these two angles here. So I'll set up for that and I'll stop the camera right now and I'll start it back up to show you uh, how I relieve this and take some of the material off by uh, cutting those two angles. All right? Okay, I have the port covering board cut to width I, I made a mark underneath, and I, I uh, took it and ran it through the, the bandsaw and then ran it on a disc sander. So it's just about a 30 second over where that wood rub rail is going to be. So the width is there. Now I'm going to cut the two angles to take away some of the material to help me, once this is on, to ferret to get this profile here. I'm going to do it in two cuts. The first cut is going to be on the bandsaw. I've got the bandsaw set to 20 degrees. And that's this cut here. And all I did, how I determined that 20 degrees was, I just put my bevel gauge on here, and I just kinda got, try to figure out where that flat is. And uh, I started, if you, if you see this line up here, I, there's a 5 8 offset there, I started it there. If you start it right here, I think it's gonna get, it's gonna be too close, you're gonna cut that corner, so, so really, that 5 eighths is from the edge here to over here. 
to this point here. And uh, that's the first angle. And then there's a second one. So you can see the first cut is gonna take out this big triangle here, and then I'll take it over to the table saw and cut the second triangle. So, and if you wanna check this to make sure you're not taking off too much material, you can buy one of these gauges here, and this profile gauge, and I kinda of put that up here. Now, my, the, the thickness here is gonna be about an eighth inch more than the original one, so you have to keep that in mind. But if you just, this is just a quick check. It's, uh, you can put this on here, and then you put this very corner, let me get my pencil, put that corner up there and the corner down there, and then kind of draw that line there, and you can see this line here, that still gives me a little bit of material to work away once it's on the boat. But I think it's important to take these corners off first, and I think it's easier to do it off the boat than, than on it. So, first thing is I'm gonna run it through the, the bandsaw here. And what, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna run it flat on the table here, and I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna run the, the blade just proud of this line. Now that's gonna be, it's gonna be all over, you'll see, but I'll straighten it out with, a, with my eight inch grinder. So let's run it through here. Keep it a little bit proud. Try to get a little closer to the line so you don't have too much work to do. Trying to keep it flat on the table. Actually, now that I'm looking at this, I'm thinking maybe it would have been easier on the, to run this portion on the table saw. There's my buddy Don. Hey, Don. Making a moving picture. Yep. Okay, so there's the first cut, and I'll stop the camera, and then I'll, I'll start it back up and show you how I clean that up with the 8-inch grinder. All right?